I'm going to sing a chorus of a song by the help of the Lord. And if you feel the same way I do, uh, I want you to sing it with me. And if you don't, uh, how many of you before in your lifetime, now that the majority of us in the building tonight, being all honest, uh, I'm telling you, I look around, let me look. I would say maybe 75% of the people in the building tonight is 70 or is 60 <laughs> years old, 60 years or older, maybe 70, 75%. Now, if we ain't already done it in life, it's too late now. Uh, Brother Omer sings that song, I'm drinking from my saucer. I've never made a fortune, and it's probably too late now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It would be stupid. It would be stupid out of me. I would be wasting my time, and, and it would be silly. I would be wasting the teacher's time for me to, boy, I tell you what, I messed up in life. I should have been a rocket scientist or a brain surgeon or something. Sister Sam, would, I'm sure, would tell me, Brother Richard, I love you, but you can't make it. I just went through all of this schooling, and I ain't done yet. Brother Richard, stick with what you're doing now, because you'll never make it out there. And she would be 100% right. But I'm telling you what, each one of us has said, maybe I'm the only one. And I've looked back over my life, and I thought, well, if I'd have done this, or I'd have done that, or I'd have chose this profession in life, I would be a lot better off right now. The Bible said, having food and raiment, be you there with content. And we're not, is anybody, uh, anybody in the church tonight didn't have nothing to eat today? We'll stop right now and, and, and send somebody over Ricky, I, I'm being serious. He's back there trying to play on Gabby's sympathy. But anyway, is anybody, everybody around, when you got up this morning, you had shoes to put on your feet? God's been good to us, and we'll worry about tomorrow, won't we? We'll say. But I look around, and I see people that I, maybe I grew up with or I went to school with, uh, they have fared much better uh, socially or financially in life than I have. It's too late to worry about that now. Really, the only thing that matters, listen, the only thing that matters is how we stand with God. We can't change that if we're 60 years and older, unless we're abnormal, our body is on the downhill swing. You know what? And it starts younger than that. We're not the men or the women we used to be. So it, 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 it's too late to worry about that. You know, folks will spend a, a whole lot of money. And I know it bothered me that when I first realized that I was losing my hair. But Zach said something to me a few years ago, and it made a whole lot of sense. Man, you'll see these advertisements on, on TV for this uh, medicine that you can take, these treatments that you can take, and you can grow hair. And boy, they show all of these results. But Jack said something. He said, Dad, if those things really work, how come there's so many rich, bald-headed men? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If money could buy it, they would get it. And they would have a full head of pretty hair. But it, it don't work because I see too many of them on TV. I know they got a lot of money and they're still bald headed. Praise the Lord. But you know what? After I'll sit and think sometimes or lay in bed at night, man, I probably should have done this, so and so done this, and look what they've acquired in life. But I go back and I say, I wouldn't change a thing. I chose many years ago. Praise the Lord. The Lord began to call me in 1978, December of 1978, to preach his word. It took me till, 90, till 85 to answer him. Do the math. Uh, that is 15, uh, 
43, 43 years, 45, I don't know, 46 years, 47 years. I'll tell you what, 48. I'm 48, thank you, James. Uh, I failed math and you didn't, sounds like. But anyways, I, I wouldn't change a thing. I'm, I, if I would have acquired all the wealth of the world, if I was a student here tonight, and I'm far, far from it, a multimillionaire, I'm all, all of that does not matter. Tony, listen, when we stand before God, the ground is gonna be level. We're gonna stand with the poor. We're gonna stand with the rich. We're gonna stand with the wise. We're gonna stand with the dumb. Listen to me. What I'm saying is all that matters if we said, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Amen. I ain't none of this. Right. Well, I'm going to heaven with the big boys. Praise the Lord. And I'll live in wealthy acres up there. And I'm glad. But the song you said, preacher, I thought you was going to have us to sing. Yeah, I wanted to get everybody's attention first. Can you sing this with me tonight? PMG, Sister Jessica, please. <laughs> I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. There's nothing like an old time Christian with a Christian love to show. I'm walking in the grand old house. I'm telling everyone I know I'd be an old time Christian than anything I know. Do it again, dude. I'd rather be an old time Come on. Anything I know There's nothing like an old time Christian Where the Christian love to show I'm walking in the grand old highway I'm telling everyone I know I'd rather be an old time Christian Than anything I know Amen. That ought to make you feel better when you go home and open up your checkbook and you say, man, I'm about broke. <coughs> Thank God forever. It don't matter. It don't matter. Praise the Lord. I know people in my lifetime, Sister Janet, has traded, listen, they've traded their, their uh, walk with Jesus Christ for wealth and fortune and fame. And it's cost them. It sure has. It's cost them their families. It's cost them their lives and all of that. Boy, I tell you what, it pays to know the Lord. Brother Tony was brought something to my mind. Uh, he was talking about owing a debt. Uh, somebody said one time that they, uh, they may be a song titled about it. He paid, I owed a debt I couldn't pay, and he paid, paid a debt he didn't know. Praise the Lord. I couldn't pay my sin debt. I owed a big price. And he paid it for me. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to read a very familiar scripture. And I want you to take your time tonight and uh, read it with me. I want you to pay close attention to what it says. Only one scripture. So many times. Now this is how I think. So many times I feel like we, uh, when we read too much, when we want to get a point across. So let me rephrase that. When we want to get one point across and do our best to get it across, we got to be careful not to add too much to it in order to mm -hmm. take away from it. That's how I think, Jane. Mm -hmm. So I'm only going to read one scripture. Most of you could quote the scripture, verse 33 of chapter 6 of Matthew. And uh, I'll probably be real brief. It shouldn't take very long at all. But any, anyways, verse 33, Jesus talking here, as you know, this is uh, words of red, said, Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, you could read the scriptures before. You could read verse 34, which ends the chapter, chapter 6, and it's all good stuff. But Jesus put this out here. And he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And these other things shall be added unto you. Jesus had just a few scriptures before that. 
had mentioned about the fowls of the air and how that he clothes them and the lilies of the field. And listen to me, he'll take care of us if we'll put him first. And if I was to title this message, I, I, would, take, I would title it tonight, Take Care of God's Business First and he'll take care of the rest. How many of you have seen that happen before? But as the Lord laid this message on my heart a couple of weeks ago, I, I thought about it a lot, and I probably read 1 Samuel chapter 8, chapter eight, chapter 9, I don't know how many times in the last couple of weeks. But as all of you Bible readers know, that uh, Samuel was having problems with the children of God, the children of Israel, in chapter 8. Uh, they had come to him, and they said, Samuel, you're getting old, and, and uh, you're too old to do anything. Samuel was a prophet. He was a seer. And uh, they told him, said, and your sons is corrupt, so we can't count on them. What we want, Samuel, we want a king. We want somebody to lead us and take care of us. Well, the Bible teaches us that Samuel told him, said, well, I'll seek God. And God said, listen, sometimes if we aggravate God, and, and you've seen it happen many, many times, listen to me. I'll share this with you. Uh, so many times we cannot understand God's time frame. Right. We cannot understand when God takes a loved one. But I've seen a lot in my ministry. In my time of ministry, I've seen a lot dealing with people. I've had people to come to me mad at God. I've had people to come to me and say, Preacher, I'll never trust God again because God didn't do things the way I wanted him to do things. But anyway, in this community, I can name the names of 99% of you would uh, know exactly the family who I'm talking to. This happened several years ago. In fact, I believe it was before I came here as pastor. I'd have to think about it a little bit. But this lady called me one evening in the community. She's now also went to meet the Lord. But anyway, she called me one evening and she said, Brother Richard, I want you and Brother Fairley McCormick to go down to Charleston General Hospital and pray for my mother. She's got a brain aneurysm, and I want God to heal her. So uh, anyways, Fairley and I got together, and we went down there that evening, that night. We went in the room with this lady that was laying in ICU, and we prayed for her, and her daughter stood there and listened. And she said, uh, we got done, and she said, that's not good enough, pray again. And so me and my brother Fairley uh, joined hands, and we laid hands on this lady, and we prayed the second time. When we got through praying the second time, the lady said, that's not good enough, pray again. And so we prayed the third time, and God Almighty moved. In a short period of time, they started taking all of the things that they had attached to this lady off of her body. And a few days, she was back in this community, and in a few weeks, she was just as well as anybody else. But listen, after that healing, that, that woman would not give up on for God to heal her mother. This lady suffered heartache after heartache after heartache. Lost children through accidents, lost grandchildren through accidents. So, listen, uh, one child died of cancer and all of this, and later, this woman, I come home from work one evening, and she was up the road, and there were several people over in a yard right up the road here. And uh, somebody flagged me down, and they called this lady by name, said that. I said, what's going on? They called her by name, said she's out there on the ground. We've taken all we can do to hold her down. She's lost her mind. 
And would you come over here and try to talk to her? I went over and tried to talk to her. I tried to pray with her. I'm telling you what, she beat four or five of us grown men and scratched us. We could not contain her. We was able to keep her in that yard till the ambulance crew come and the police. But this lady that it insisted that me and fairly pray till God healed her mother, come to me and later. She said, I was so selfish in asking God to spare my mother's life. Then said my mother's life was nothing but pure hell after God healed her body. God was going to take her home. God was going to protect her of all of this heartache and grief. But I was selfish. I had to keep her. And my mother's life was only torment. Come on. That's good preaching. It's sometimes hard to say, have thine own way, Lord. But we have got to say, have thine own way. You know all things. That's why I'm trusting you. That's why I'm serving you. You know everything. God, have your own way. Amen. Is it hard to do, preacher? Sure, it's hard to do. But we've got to accept God's will and God's way. Chapter 8, the children of Israel was telling Samuel, said, we need a king. Mm -hmm. You won't do. You're too old. Your voice is corrupt. And so Samuel began to inquire of God. And the Bible teaches us there. What do you say, James? They want somebody tall and strong. Huh? They want somebody tall and strong. That's right. They wanted somebody young, tall and strong. Listen, it wasn't so much Samuel was, was a prophet, he was a seer, the job was getting done, but that wasn't good enough for the people. They wanted somebody, James, that they could brag on, somebody that they could look up to. Everybody would be amazed. And the Bible teaches us that there was a man of the tribe of Benjamin by the name of Kish. Kish had a son by the name of Saul. And the Bible said, James, that Saul was uh, taller than everybody else. Saul was pleasant to look on. Saul was pretty and all of that. And God said, all right, here's what they wanted. Well, I'm not going to preach about the whole life of Saul. But anyway, the Bible said in chapter 9 about verse 3, verse 2 or 3, that, that Kish had a bunch of, bunch of donkeys. And the Bible calls them, as you all know in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, asses. But anyway, we'll use donkeys, which is the same thing. And so the Bible said that these donkeys got out of the pasture or whatever, and they was lost. And the Bible said that Kish told Saul, his son, he said, I want you to go down and uh, take a servant with you, and I want you to go out and find, try to find the donkeys that have escaped. Donkeys would be like uh, uh, us today, our automobiles, you know. If, if we lost our automobile or somebody stole our automobile, that's a big deal to me. You know what I'm saying? It's a big deal to you. But anyway, these donkeys, these asses, was their livelihood. But anyway, the Bible said that Saul took a servant and he went from one land to the other. And, and they could not find these donkeys that was going. And finally Saul looked at his servant and he told him, he said, well, we've got to turn and go back home. He said, because you, my, my dad, uh, he, he was, my father, he was so concerned about these donkeys, but we've been going so long. He's done quit worrying about the donkeys and he's going down to listen and look for, for uh, he started to worry. I was looking at my, he started to worry about the, he's quit worrying about the donkeys and worrying about us. But the Bible said that Saul and his servant now was in, in a place called Zalt. And uh, his servant said, wait a minute, said, let's don't leave yet. He said, 
There's a man in this town. As I, was, as I told you, I was reading uh, the scripture several times in the past couple of weeks, these two chapters, chapter 8 and chapter 9. Another thought that came to my mind, James, uh, you can look there in 1 Samuel chapter 8, chapter 9, uh, probably about verse 9, somewhere along there. It says that Saul's servant looked at him and he said, there's a man in this town, praise the Lord forever. And boys, when I read that over and over, Sister Melinda, I thought, my goodness, that'd be a good message to preach. I'm glad there's a man in town, praise the Lord. I'm glad there's somebody, listen, that walks with me and talks with me. Did listen to me and told me as I thought on that message, on that scripture, on that verse, I thought about it. it's good for people to know where the man of God is. Bobby, I don't want to be anything and I know that you don't want to be anything and a lot of you men and women in this field, you don't want no pats on the back, you don't want no praise, but you want to be a person of God. It's important, praise the Lord. It's important. There's been people come to you. Oh, there's been people come to me that you thought never had a bit of confidence in you. But when they had a problem, they come to you because they had stood back and seen your faithfulness. Those times, as Ricky was talking about this morning, when you feel like laying in the bed, when you feel like, oh, nobody will know if I go to church or not. But Brother Ricky, you know as well as I do, somebody's watching. Well, I said Ricky didn't go to church this morning. I'll tell you, I said right now, old Brother Hub, I've seen him. He went down there on the riverbank. He had that fish bait that he got for Father's Day. He wasn't in church. But when somebody, listen, Brother Timmy, when I need a prayer to, I want to know that there's somebody, somebody that's serious about God. Amen. 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 The Bible don't give a whole lot of information, a whole lot of background about this servant of Saul. But he said, I want to tell you, there's a man in this town, Brother Andy. And he said, he's a seer. A seer is another word for prophet. He said, he knows everything. He's a man of God. He said, let's go down and talk to him. And Saul said, well, ain't no sense in us going to talk to him. He said, we spent all of our money. We've eaten all of our bread. We had nothing to offer him. He said, well, I got a fourth of a part of a shekel here. He said, left in my pocket and said, we'll see how much that gets us. So anyway, they went down, but God Almighty, had and he was talking about Samuel. God already spoke to Samuel, and he said about this time tomorrow, there's going to be two men coming by, and they're going to acquire of you. My people, the children of Israel, are looking for a king, and I'm going to give them a king. I'm going to give them just exactly what they want. Mm -hmm. But anyways, uh, he said, uh, uh, the servant told Saul, he said, he said, uh, this man, this man, he's a man of God. He don't even know where the donkeys are. How about that? Oh, my goodness gracious. Listen to me. God's mindful of everything, and God knows right. everything, James. And we can know his mind tonight right. if we want to separate ourselves and know the mind of God. But anyway, the word of God says that this servant told Saul, he said, let's go talk to the preacher, to the prophet. Said he knows everything, he knows God. All he's got to do is go ahead and say, God, where's these donkeys at? He said, uh, he'll tell us just exactly where they are. Wouldn't that be something to have a testimony like that? That people say, man, I know Tony Bob, he can get a prayer to. I'm, let's go down and talk to him. Amen. We Amen. need that church. Our church needs that. So anyway, the Lord told Samuel, he said, now there's going to be two men coming to said it's going to be the son of, of, of uh, Kish. And he said, they're coming down here looking for donkeys. He said, but that's a man I want you to anoint to be king. And the Bible said there in chapter 9 that they met some maidens that they was going to look for Samuel and said, is the seer here? Said, yeah. Said, listen, it's about dinner time. And said, he's getting ready to come bless the food. The people won't eat. Oh, bless the Lord. I read that, Brother Timmy, and I thought on that. Oh, my, my. When you go back and you say, man, I know all the scripture, and I, I think all uh, about it and all like that. 
uh, and, but you go back and the Lord opens up something new. And as I, I was reading that, I say, man, what another testimony Samuel had. Listen to me. And this man told him, said, it's about dinner time. And said, these people, oh, glory to God. These glory people won't God, eat God. until the prophet comes down, till Samuel comes down and blesses the food. Well, Jessica, wouldn't that be special? Praise the Lord. Man, for a whole town to say, ain't nobody eating till the black preacher comes out and blesses the food. You talking about church? God opened up the windows of heaven and poured out blessings that his people can't contain. If we'll get God's business first and get the thing right, man, God will bless us. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say it again. I'll be in a restaurant somewhere and, and I sit and watch people. I watch two things. I was talking to some folks in the barber shop this week, and 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 this one person was talking about that in their earlier years they worked in a restaurant, and and uh, he got to talking, and it upset me, and I had to stay my ground. He said, "Buddy, I'll tell you what, you talk about these people tips, tipping, and people cruel." He worked in a certain restaurant. He said, I dreaded Sunday. I said, here we go. He's going to slam me right here in front of this whole barbershop. <laughs> and I stood my ground. And he said, the meanest people in the whole week is the after church crowd that comes in a restaurant on Sunday. We could hear a needle drop. I hope a lot of our people's listening tonight. I don't care who's listening, people all over. And he said, I'll say something else. He was telling this other guy. They're the worst tippers of the whole week. <clears throat> Sad, ain't it? And so I had to step in. I said, I'm a pastor. I've been pastoring for over 25 years. This ain't the first time I heard this, but ain't everybody like that. I said, I told my church time and time again, I told everybody that I saw, if you go out, you make sure you're nice. Mm -hmm. And you also, if you ain't got much, you tell them, listen, there was a little boy went in a restaurant one time and, and, and went in there and boy, they was busy. He said up on, on the counter, and said, said, asked the waitress, said, how much is a cone of ice cream? And she told him, she said, it's 25 cents. And he said, okay. He said, how much is a cup of ice cream? And she said, it's 20 cents. <laughs> and after she had told him that the ice cream cone was 25 cents, she said he wretched in his pocket, aggravated her to death, said they was, they was customers wanting this and wanting that. He wrenched down his pocket. He pulled a bunch of pennies out of his pocket and he counted them out. And, and he looked at her then and said, if an ice cream cone's 25 cents, how much is a cup of ice cream? She said for one scoop, it's 20 cents. He went back and counted that money again. Boy, she was fuming. He said, ma'am, could I have a cup of ice cream? And boy, she went, went over there. Listen, we better watch how we react. We might cut ourselves out of the blessing. She went over there and got that cup and put up one scoop of ice cream in it, took it back over, slammed it down on the table, and she said, and walked off like, I hope you get out of here, you aggravating kid. And so she, the kid ate his ice cream and, and left his cup there. And the lady was taking care of other customers. After a little while, she ran over and she said, oh, where's that old cup? That old that aggravating kid left. And she grabbed that cup, put that spoon in it, that bowl or whatever it was, 
had her picked it up and started to walk off, and she seen something laying there and said that little boy, listen, had given up the cone so he could tip the waitress. Up. Said there was five pennies laying there beside that dirty bowl and said she began to cry and said, God forgive me. Listen, that little boy was more concerned about blessing me than he was enjoying a cone of ice cream. I'm telling you what, God Almighty still got good things for us and we miss out on it. Take care of God's business first and he'll take care of the rest. But anyway, that those maidens told uh, Saul said, nobody eats till Lord have mercy. I wasn't going to plan on preaching none this long, but said nobody eats till the preacher prays. And they got done eating. And after they got done eating, the Bible said that they went, they <coughs> went out of there. And Samuel told Saul when he served, he said, listen, I want you to spend the night. He said, I got some good news for you. And so anyways, uh, the next morning, the Bible said that Saul, Samuel told Saul, said, tell your servant to go uh, on ahead of you. He said, I got some dealings with you. I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. And the Bible said that Samuel took oil and poured over the head of Saul and anointed the king. Listen to me. All of this commotion going on, we think God has forgotten sometimes. We think God don't know our personal needs. But of all this commotion going on, the Bible said that Samuel, sister, uh, uh, Belinda, you know what I'm talking about. Samuel looked at Saul and he said, you know, uh, the reason you come to town, you was looking for your father's donkeys. Uh, he said they've been found. And the Bible teaches us there in chapter 9, chapter 10, the Bible said uh, that Samuel told Saul, said, when you're starting on your journey, said, you'll go down beside the, the sepulcher uh, of Rachel and you'll meet some men carrying bread and said they'll offer you some and they'll tell you where the donkeys is at. Listen to me tonight. The moral of the story is what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Listen. Saul Samuel could have, Saul could have looked at Samuel and said sir I ain't got time to fool with you. I'm on a mission and my father's worried to death about me but Samuel was at least an all of his wrongdoing, willing to let the man of God do as God had instructed him. I know he didn't understand all of this. I know he didn't know the reason behind all this, James, but he was obedient to the man of God, to the word of God, and God bless him, and his journey was fruitful. And the very same thing can happen to us if we learn to say, God, have thine own way. God, I want you more than anything else. I want to please you. These other things will fall in the road. Amen. But God knows when we've got a, what, how do you say that, ulterior uh, motive? Ulterior. Ulterior. Huh? Ulterior. Ulterior. That means a different motive, you know. God knows when our heart is willing to please him or we're just in it for what we can reap or what we can get out. God knows. He sure does. Amen, preacher. But Jesus looked at this crowd. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and these other things shall be added to you. How many has been blessed tonight? But not because of God. We worry, and I'm telling you what, people is probably more worried in this day that we live in today than they've ever been since the beginning of time. Things are so uncertain. But the point I wanted to get across tonight and the thought that I had on my mind, if we'll trust Jesus as uncertain as everything else looks, he'll come through for us. David said, I was young, I'm old now, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread.
Maybe this message is for one person. Maybe it's for everybody. I don't want to know your business. I don't want to know your thoughts. But I guarantee you I'm speaking to a bunch of people and amongst a, lot, a bunch of people tonight that I'm not the only one in the house that worries. But we worry about things when if we put God first, he's committed to us. He's committed to us. They ain't a person under the sound of my voice wouldn't give your last slice of bread to one of your kids. Ain't a person under the sound of my voice wouldn't give your kids your last penny and you not know where the next one come from. Jesus said, if you know, if you being evil know how to give good gifts, how much more does your heavenly Father give to them that love you? Put yourself in his shoes and you'll know that he'll bless us. Father, we come before you tonight. Help us to put you first. Help us to seek you first. Father, help us, Lord, to have a desire. Whatever it takes, Lord, we'd rather be an old-time Christian. We would rather walk with you, Lord. We would rather serve you. Father, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Well, I, I would be safe in saying we're all guilty, Lord, of getting our desires and our needs and our worries in front of your plan so many times. But help us, Lord, to purpose in our heart. God, let's take care of your business first. Let's, let's do your work first. And I know these other things will be added unto you. Can you help us here at Rumble Community Baptist Church that we would have that number one purpose? Lord, let's do your work. Let's get your work done first. And I know these other things will fall just in line, just like with Saul and Samuel and Kish and the servant. So, Father, help us tonight. Those tonight, Lord, that's, that's wanting to serve you, those that's unsaved, and Lord, they want to be saved so bad, but, Lord, they're so afraid. Help them, Lord. Help them to know if they'll just surrender all to you, Lord. If they'll just say, Lord, whatever happens, sink or swim, I want to serve you and I want to be your servant. Save my old soul. God, give folks courage. If there's someone under the sound of my voice tonight that needs to pray, needs to ask you into their heart, give them courage right now. Every head's bowed, the Christians is praying. We're all here loving one another, and it's time for somebody to get help tonight. Give someone courage to slip out of the seat. Make their way to an altar of prayer. Oh, me.